Ladies and gentlemen, you're not going to believe this. I'm on the 50th floor of Mandalay Bay here in Las Vegas for a private Killer Tracks party. They're going to show some of their two artists, three artists, four artists they have on their label, and they're going to be playing here tonight. So sit back, relax. Let's watch them blow it up, ladies and gentlemen. This is Eddie Hazard here at Mandalay Bay with the Killer Tracks private party, and we have the CEO himself, Andy Donahue here, and we're getting ready to tear it up tonight, Andy. Tell us a little bit about uh, Killer Tracks company. Thanks, Hayward. We're, uh, I'm actually the director of marketing. Not, I wish I was the CEO, oh, but- you didn't get the memo? I, I haven't, I got a lot of emails this week, so I guess I must have missed that, but <laughs> thank hey, you. Thank you, Andy. Yeah, so we're, uh, we're here at the Mandalay Bay in the foundation room and uh, celebrating NAB 2019. Uh -huh. And uh, we've been licensing production music to clients for 30 years. We have a wealth of uh, knowledge and uh, amazing partnerships with artists, and we're here to share some really great information on some new labels. We have a partnership with Abbey Road in wow. London. Wow that all the albums are produced, mixed, and mastered at Abbey Road, and uh, that's a long-time partnership, so we'll be continuing to release albums from there. Uh, we're here to celebrate a new label called Wax. Mm -hmm. that, uh, are they local? They're local in LA, in a studio in Hollywood, and they work with, um, they actually have their own record label as well, so we uh, they push artists that aren't on tour and stuff to uh, record stuff for us, and they do an amazing job. And they'll be performing here tonight as well. Oh, tonight? Absolutely. Wow. Well, I have a song called Don't Worry, Be Happy. Can you hook that up for me? Let me see. All right. I'll, I'll send you a memo on Monday. Oh, those memos. <laughs> I'd like to thank you, Andy, uh, Donahue, uh, for the you. interview. I can't wait to party tonight. And matter of fact, I'm going to let, let everything relax my hair down and let get it, it go. all, man. Thanks, Hayward. All here, right. let me hey, fix your hair a little bit. <laughs> he knows where I'm from. So this has been Eddie Hazard here at Mandalay Bay for the NAB Festival private party. Sit back and relax. We're going to tear it up tonight. This and uh, we have a lot of great things to share, um, a lot of new announcements, and some amazing artists here that um, have been a huge addition to our catalog. And so we're excited to present to you um, artists, and uh, also our vice president of sales and marketing, Anna Maria Hall, has a few things to say. And uh, let's let it roll. Hey, thanks, Andy. Um, we're really excited to be here at NAB. This actually is my 10th NAB, um, and our 30th year with, uh, as Killer Tracks as a company. We started with 30 CDs, and we, also, we act, actually at this point we have 3,500 CDs. So we have um, music that's pre-cleared, that is basically uh, created, produced, and written specifically for production. And that's super important. Um, production music has become really, really important in, in our industry because of all the, the plethora of, of, uh, of uh, the plethora of, of pr productions that are out there, um, especially driven by social media, digital, and um, and all the all the different avenues that have come out as far as production is concerned. Um, we basically focus on great music. We have two new labels that we, we are, are launching here at NAB. Um, one is Audio Wax and the other one is Abbey Road. So we're really proud of those two particular uh, products and uh, labels. And um, we always say, you know, if we have great music and you can't find it, you know, it doesn't matter. So we also uh, focus on technology. And so we have a, a partnership with Adobe and it's a panel where you can actually access the music native within your editing suite. So it's really, really important that, that that's available for our clients because it really helps with the workflow and also with uh, saving time. So those are the few things that we have that we're announcing here at NAB. So I just want to thank you guys for all coming out. And as music evolves, uh, Killer Tracks Hip Hop presence and catalog in the last 18 months has taken a tre tremendous change and really has, it's blown all of our clients and our, our employees away at the quality of new hip hop music that we're producing. All thanks to a uh, new producer that we have on staff, Luke Spry. So I'd like to have Luke come up and he's got some artists and producers to uh, introduce. Thank you, Luke. 
That's all, guys. Um, yeah, we've been doing a lot of hip hop. Uh, been doing a lot of trap for the catalog, and uh, it's been going well. We've been doing a lot of placements with uh, sports in particular. But um, these two guys right here helped me a lot with this, and they introduced me to a lot of great producers, up and coming producers, and household names. And uh, this guy's Derek Miner to my right here. He's a commercial rapper, commercial artist. And I've uh, been so kind to do an album for us. Um, and this was introed by this guy, Alex Hitchens, who is a producer, composer, and uh, works a lot for uh, both commercial music and, and production music. So very lucky to get this guy, um, who's helped out a lot. One of the perks of working at the record plant is meeting Rose Man Churney, a truly unique figure in the modern recording industry. Hal Blaine first became known to the ears of America as the heartbeat as well as the locomotive in Phil Spector's Wall of Sound. Now we have groups like Bass Nectar going out there. What it fascinates them is more environmentally complex things. There's no one with a list of credits like he's got. The golden age of the modern recording studio can be traced back to two industry trailblazers. There's probably nothing more than I want to do produce the Beatles. From a truly memorable musical moment in time, this section with a house band that defined a generation. Welcome to Global Innovation. I'm your guest host this week, Eddie Hazard. Our guest today is Stacy Wilson, who's the producer and director of the new film, The Venture Stars on Guitars. Stacy is the daughter of The Venture's co-founder, Don Wilson. Stacy, tell us a little bit about the film and why you wanted to tell the story. Um, well, it was a way to honor my dad and his band, The Ventures, which the of course greatest. I grew up with. And, mm -hmm. um, so I'm a film director. I've directed some narrative films, but this is my first documentary, and it's quite a different experience. I would <laughs> to imagine. Put it mildly, yeah, would for imagine. sure. Um, so we've been working on it for about two years now, mm -hmm. myself and my family, and gathering all the interviews. And now we're in mm -hmm. the post-production phase, which is exciting because that means pretty soon people will be able to see it. Mm -hmm. Tell us about some of the stars that uh, were interviewed in this uh, movie. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the. Don Wilson, the Ventures songs are heard all over the world, literally. Yes. All over the world. There, there's not one song you out there watching and haven't heard of. Back right, to you. and that's the thing about the Ventures is I think because they're an instrumental band, yeah. and there isn't you know a flamboyant lead singer or like you know Robert Plant or Mick Jagger or something like that. That people mm -hmm. they know the Ventures music, but they don't necessarily know it until they hear it. So right. this is kind yep. of a way to reintroduce the tunes that everybody knows. Of course, Hawaii Five-O and Pipeline and Walk Don't Run and wipe Perfidia out. and yeah, Wipe Out and they had a hit with the Mission Impossible theme as well. That's so, crazy. Yeah, so we got to interview uh, Lalo Schifrin, the composer of that, and we really kind of dug deep to find insiders who had different stories about the ventures that no one's really heard yet. Uh, how did you get a hold to Robert Page? Um, oh, uh, uh, Jimmy, Page? Jimmy Page. Robert yeah. Page. <laughs> I've been drinking, ladies and gentlemen. All <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, Jimmy Page. I actually caught up with him just on a red carpet and started asking him about the ventures. But I had already known, being uh, a huge Led Zeppelin fan myself, um, that hey, hey. that yeah, that he loved to play. You know, Walk Don't Run when he was learning how to play guitar. So, mm -hmm. you know, I had asked him about that, and he was kind enough to give us a few sound bites. So it's not a sit-down interview like mm -hmm. most of them are. You know, mm -hmm. more in depth, but it's great to have, you know, him talking about the ventures as well. Now John Fogarty, he's a local guy yeah. here now. Tell us about John. Oh, well, Because I, I know John from back <laughs> in the day. I drove to his house to do the interview, actually, and it was just me and my camera and my microphone. I love and that. Yeah, because I wanted to keep it, like, pretty low-key, because I know, like, he's a pretty big star, and, you know, saying I'm going to bring my entourage probably yeah. wouldn't have sat too well, so I set up the interview, though. But he inducted the ventures into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, yeah. so he already, you know, has that connection with the band and um, been a longtime fan, and he told 
told me that um, when he was take family vacations, he would sit in the back of the station wagon with really? his guitar mm -hmm. and, you know, learning to play guitar. And, uh, you know, Walk Don't Run was one of the first songs that he learned to play. Get, get out of here. Absolutely, yeah. Oh, wait till I see him again. <laughs> yeah. So, so what, 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 what um, just the deciding factor I want to say to make you just sit down and go, you know, I want to make a film about my dad and the ventures. When, uh, when was that point? When was yeah, that moment? Yeah, well, um, there had been another documentarian that started a project about 10 years ago, mm -hmm. and they seemed to have just set it aside. So uh, I thought, well, you know, I can do this. I've made films, and I know I have a Amazing. lot of connections. And so does my dad, of course, and my brother and my sister through my dad. They know a lot of different musicians. And since I have a lot of connections with cinematographers and editors, <laughs> I just figured I'd put it together. But it certainly has been a really much more difficult yes. process because it's so time-consuming. At least with the narrative film, you have a script to follow, and you hire the actors, and they're all in a controlled environment. But Correct. with the documentary, you're kind of just running all over the place to catch different people when they're in town, and you never have the same set, so to speak. So it's really uh, more dynamic. Yes, <laughs> yeah, yes. for sure. And, and here you're a one-person operation. You're the right. camera. You got to <laughs> well, set it up. I, I did for John Fogarty, but yeah, I do have. You know, I have a DP when people are in LA that comes to uh, shoot. So some of you know some of the quality is different because you've got different types of cameras, and some people have to self-record. Like we have. Um, um, Rayuki, she's uh, a famous Japanese guitarist, and mm -hmm. so she self-recorded in Japan, you know, oh. and it looks great, but it's just a different setup. So it's going to be an interesting hodgepodge for the uh, editor to put together, <laughs> but she's very talented, so I have faith. So, so when, do you, uh, uh, when are you looking for the release date of the uh, movie? Uh, well, we should have a rough cut together by late June. Uh -huh. so, um, oh, quick. Yeah. So we're, we're in we May right now, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> we're, <laughs> right, we're in the month so of May right be, now. Yeah, fairly soon. But then you have to fine tune it, of course, with a documentary. Another thing that's different from a narrative film to a documentary uh -huh. is that you have to have an entertainment lawyer to make sure that oh, my goodness, fair yeah. use and all the uh, T's are crossed and the I's are dotted and whatnot because we have to use... Um, a lot of footage that we don't know where it came from. Uh, you know, there's uh, yes. a lot of vintage footage of the ventures that was shot, you know, from who knows where that, you know, has been sent to us or, you know, found online. Oh, oh you, you'll get a call. <laughs> <laughs> right, so that's why we yeah, have a lawyer. You'll get a call. Yeah, and luckily, I mean, I was able to secure a lot of so permission nice. from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and PBS and, you know, always reach out and ask first. And if I can't find the person, then, you know, that's what the fair use attorney is for. There you go, there you <laughs> and go. Yeah, and there so we've go. had a lot of great folks, though, who've donated their footage, too. And Fantastic. But it's, it, yeah, it's definitely a lot to put together. So once that that's all together. Then we hope to uh, hit a few film festivals and find oh, distribution. Oh, you're doing fine. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, I, I, you, you would do it extremely well. Well, I music mean. documentaries are so popular right now. I mean, yeah, you really are. Netflix and Hulu and Amazon are just filled with them, and people can't get enough. So. <laughs>
Lucas Spry? Alex Hitchens. All right, now tell me, how did you get started with Killer Tracks? Yeah, so me and Alex go way back. He produced on one of my first albums. How, how far back? You're saying way back. I'm saying 10 years. Oh, we go whoa. back. Yeah, yeah. So, he, yeah, he was there when I was making music out of the closet. So, oh, you, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, yeah, man. So, uh, I was uh, went to cut a verse at his at his studio, and uh, he said, "Man, my, my buddy Luke works for this great company." I said, "I want to get into more into production music." So, uh, man, we he introduced me. I think I knocked out the project in what three weeks, three four weeks? weeks. Yeah, so Damn. yeah, produced it, mixed it. How, how uh, many songs on your track? Twelve. Yeah, Twelve, 12 tracks. So yeah, so we just knocked it out, man. Well, what's what's the name of the song? Album. Uh, name of the album's called Going Up. Going yes, up. Yes, sir. Going okay. up. Yeah. Where are you from? I'm from Nashville, Tennessee, oh, baby, where right. the best food in the world resides. <laughs> hey, you weren't supposed to say that. <laughs> hey, man, I'm the music director and producer for Killer Tracks, and um, I'm blessed oh, to wow. work with Alex Hitchens and Derek Miner here, and uh, together we are just basically building the hip-hop catalog. Um, a lot of contemporary stuff, a lot of trap stuff. Um, it's what clients been looking for, and um, I'm lucky to work with these guys hands-on, and these guys can just deliver what we ask for right on the dot. There's no ifs and buts. It's right 100% to the client, and these guys sync it, and we work a lot oh, with right NFL, the NBA, uh, MLB, NCAA, you name it. Uh, we've been ESPN, and, and you know we're very lucky to get those syncs, and you know it's very clear that uh, the stuff that's on the radio, um, people want that sound, and these yeah. guys are the, the makers of that, and so it, you just have to go after the people who are original makers of that. So that's what I do. I grab these guys, and, and they do all that work. How did you, how did you find out about them? Um, I found out this is my guy Alex, and Damn, he's the Alex. one who introduced me people to are. a lot of amazing people, and I wouldn't be here and know the network I have without him. And um, through that, I meet amazing people like Derek. It's a hell of a story. Alex, tell us about yourself, bro. Yes. Yeah, you so, get started, man. So, you know him 10 years. <laughs> right. Story. Yeah, no, I've known Derek for 10 years. I've known Luke for almost three. Um, I met him when he moved to L.A. And Where were you living? He came from Boston. I came from Cleveland. Mass. Okay, okay. So, you know, we, we were friends. You know, uh, we just would write together, produce together. And then eventually he, uh, you know, he's got a great opportunity to kill his tracks. And I told him, any way I can help him out, I'd be more than happy to do it. Um, and yeah, we, we built uh, just a rhythm and a kind of a familiarity. And so we've been able to work on some really cool projects. Um, clients are really happy about it, you know, and the more we've done it, the more we've learned how to kind of continually, you know, keep up, but also push the, the you know, the envelope with hip hop, you know, specifically hip hop. Um, but I mean, we've been able to do pop, Latin music, K-pop, and uh, you know, we just want to make sure we rival what you hear ev everywhere else. We, you know, you don't want there to be a drop off of production music, and so I think it's a testament to his ear. You know, finding great guys, and you know, we just try to do our part. So, so it's been a, it's good teamwork. I don't think I can fit in. I got this new song called "Don't Worry, Be Happy." Can you hook a brother up? I like the way it sounds. Like that. That's a great that's title. A, that's, that's a proverb. It's a great right title. <laughs> it took me like two minutes to make it. <laughs> I'm just saying. All right, now you guys are in Las Vegas. I mean, evidently you you hit it. You're coming to Vegas, man. You're not in Milpitas, California. I'm hating on Milpitas. And so, where's your next move? Because it's really hard to get stuff on the air consistently. Yeah, I think it's you know I think we've been really fortunate to exist both in mainstream production, you know, film, TV, just all these different spaces. And so, you know, I, you know, I always say chase inspiration, you know, surround yourself with great people, chase inspiration and make great music, you know, and we, we're essentially trying to drive the, the soundtrack for the culture. So whether it's for NBA 2K, whether it's for ESPN, NFL Network, you know, constantly give, give them music that, you know, doesn't feel like a drop off, you know, when you go to a bumper or when you go to a commercial or an advertisement. So. Um, yeah, just constantly kind of looking to the horizon, seeing what's new, how can we combine different sounds, different yeah. genres yeah. together, whether it's hip-hop, Latin, orchestral, hip-hop, you know, all these different things. So. I got one question. When you hear a song, do you know, because you already know, that, hey, this this is a song, this is it? Yeah. No, I tell them, we chase the feeling. At the end of the day, right. chase the feeling. You know, don't try to chase the end game, chase the feeling, and everything else will take care of itself. And you know when you feel it. When you got, you know, it could be, it could be 30 minutes, and you know you got it. Yeah, so. I'm a comic. I'll write a thing, and I'll start laughing again. Finish. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's that's um, what made you get into singing and rap? Did you sing as a child, or what? What happened? Yeah, it was the way me and my dad bonded. So, oh, damn. Yeah, yeah. I, I would pull up. He was a jazz musician, and he was recording. The way I first started rapping was he was recording a rapper that wasn't really good. Yeah, that's how it goes. So, so me being cocky and arrogant, 12 year old. <laughs> I hop on the mic and start freestyling. My dad's like, yo, this dude's a, you, right you got on, something in you. So he uh, helped develop that and 
I developed it in churches and, yeah, and yeah. developed it everywhere. And wherever there was a mic, I was on it. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So then, same thing, making beats since I was 15. So, yeah. Well, I got to ask you, how'd you get involved? How'd you I, start out? I got lucky uh, to come here to LA with such a good network of people. What was it? Were you looking music business? Yeah, oh, for sure, yeah. I came out of Berkeley in Boston and I knew I wanted to be a music business and wow. I studied there and I got into LA, got into the right hands with the right people. And honestly, 100% of it is just being ready. And, uh, and when you get that opportunity, uh, you got to be able to call people like these guys because, yeah, yeah. you know, I, I could they could give me the opportunity, but I need to be prepared. So, there so it is. There, exactly. So I was ready, and, and these guys delivered for me. And, and luckily, the stars aligned, and, and that's how we got here today. So. so, what do you think? Discipline is the main thing, consistency to do it. Don't sit on your ass. Right. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he said it. You know, you got to stay ready so you don't have to get ready. Right. You know, in a culture where everything's happening 100 miles an hour and you know, nothing kind of lasts forever. It's always on to the next thing. I think in music, being ready. You never know when this guy will call me or right. I'll call Derek and being able to turn around quickly is, uh, I think it, it's, uh, you know, it's a huge ingredient yeah. to maintain relevancy and to maintain, you know, excellence in this culture, so. Right. Well, well, I'm impressed you got, how, how you guys got together. I mean, you, then him, and then you call up him, you call him yeah. and stuff. Yeah. I, I got the wrong phone numbers. Hey, <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, my phone answers to Lyft, you know, <laughs> Uber, you know, not even to no women, you know. What's up with that? Uh -oh. Yeah, oh yeah, uh oh. <laughs> See, I want to get one of them chains like he's wearing right there, you know. Man. All I got is all I got is string on my I'm neck. For a chain, can I get a chain? Out? You, <laughs> you wanna, you're, you're talking to him. Uh, tell it. So, so we gotta close it up because the party's getting ready to start here, ladies and gentlemen. If you're not here at this party, Las Vegas, Mandalay Bay. Mandalay Bay, you want to say something in closing? Peace. Oh, damn. Uh oh, one, one word. Killer tracks where music matters. Check it out. Yeah, just continue making great music. Work with your friends. You know, be ready. Have fun with it. You know, have fun. That's when the best music happens. Right? Tell them your name. Alex Hitchens. Luke Spry. Derek Miner. Eddie Hazard here at Mandalay Bay. We'll see you in a minute when we get ready to party. <laughs>